the Armenian government is not doing what it needs to be doing to promote this sector. If we're talking about exporting organics, then, or something like that, it, once you start to import your uh, material into another country, even if it's Russia, you have to meet export standards. And so, since there isn't a culture of food safety, and there isn't a culture of standards for the Armenian consumer, kind of a buyer beware market, if you're going to get in the import-export business, you are responsible for doing all the certification to make sure the products that you're delivering outside of the market meet standards. Um, you remember I showed you the picture of the Israelis who are running this small dairy where they're making cheese, um, the husband and wife? They drive their cheese to market. They do not just hire somebody to take their cheese to the shop in Yerevan where they sell it. They pack up their own car. They drive from Nuremberg to Yerevan. It's about a four-hour trip. They deliver the cheese, and then they come back. So that basically ruins their whole day. So common carrier transport services, which would be necessary for growing agriculture, they're not popular. I'm not going to say that they don't exist. But the Israelis didn't know anybody that they could trust to take their cheese to your van and not even another producer because they were one of the pioneering producers in this region of the country. Um, and I will also warn you that there are some actors, for lack of a better term, people, that are detrimental to progress in this sector that you go talk to them, and if you do enough digging, you find out that the reason why they're engaging with you is so that they can have an exclusive right to whatever it is that your business objective you're trying to accomplish. And they're not necessarily offering anything to the village farmers directly. They're saying that, you know, I'm going to be able to provide translation services or something like that, and maybe one person in the family can speak English, not the actual person that's running the business. So just a word of warning, just like any place else that you do, do business. Yes, there are a lot of organizations and groups that are pushing forward and doing good things for Armenia. There are also some bad apples in the bunch, and if you can get them out of the, the basket, they won't spoil the rest of the crop. Any questions? Okay. That gives you an idea of what's going on in agriculture. I hope that some of what I showed you in the pictures and what I said in the slides made sense together. Can I? Sure, I go ahead. Question? Because I didn't realize that you're going to go to Twitter. Yeah, if you want to talk about agriculture, now's the time no, to ask your yeah. question. Uh, uh, subject that you brought up, which is detrimental in the general category, which is the last point. Okay, one of the biggest points, and I, I wasn't sure if you were going to mention it or not, or you were aware of it or not. One of the biggest problems in the agriculture area is the fact that the Yerevan market, which is the big market. Yeah, we saw pictures okay, of that. Yeah. It's not available to the village. No, it's not. It's not available. And that is not available. It's not available simply because the mafia, or whatever you want to call them, okay, they control the supplies to the city which most of the time is imported rather than, for example, let's say tomato. Everybody goes to Yerevan, they praise the tomato, all they're eating is turkey tomato, not an Armenian tomato. Well, I was in Gumri, so I think I was eating Armenian tomatoes. I don't know. Uh, go, no, on. You go, go on, go on. I, I see your point. Okay. Okay? And when the farmer tries to bring his production to the city, he is way stopped, way before he gets to the city, blocked out and so forth, and destroyed, whatever it is. And therefore, when you mentioned a few steps back, the government, the role of the government, and so forth, it's not the government's, the government shortage of in getting involved in agriculture, and it's not only in logistics, but also in preserving the markets and things like this. So this guy, the only market that they have is Yerevan, okay? And if Yerevan is blocked out, then these guys are gonna be left in this situation and I know it from day one when these lands were being privatized. It is 20 years later, and we're still in the same case. So these are the issues that uh, I don't know if you are going to bring it up later on or not. But these are very, very important issues. Otherwise, this sector will never grow uh, to its potential. So I would, I would like to, 
I would say that I cannot refute what you're saying. I'm going to say that in some cases, not all the time, what you're saying has a ring of truth to it. But the Israelis were funded by the Center for Agribusiness and Rural Development in Armenia, which is a USDA-funded organization, and they were given the training, and they were given um, the loans that they needed to have this dairy, where they take the milk, and they produce it, and they sell it in Yerevan, and they actually do everything from the point on. So, that, that's, the that's other... The point. You see, the, the system, and USAID, and I've had long discussions with them quite a few years ago. Uh, USAID and, the U and, and uh, USDA whatever, are different. Whatever, They're different. Uh, you know, over the years, things have changed. But the point is this, that they never were funding a wholesaler who would visit this farm, buy the cheese from the farmer, okay, and then he brings it to the marketplace and then sells it to hotels, this and that, and so on. This is the key. If you the, the correctly mentioned, he loses a whole day of production. Right. Okay? For taking it to Yerevan and so forth. Either you're a producer, or you are a transporter, or this or that, they pretend to be both. When the middleman is up there, who basically will go from farm to farm, what production do you have? It is the price that I'm willing to pay, probably, and then picks up, and he has his trucks to transport them. And the important thing is this, you also would have the connections to get into Yerevan. Otherwise, you would never see the border of Yerevan. You know, I will respond to your question by basically saying, I'm not going to disagree with what you have, say has merit. But there are people in your, there are organizations in Yerevan that work within what I would consider to be reliable within the context of law and society are trying to do something positive. And let's work with the organizations that are doing something positive and ignore the ones that will not give money to the ones that are causing problems. And specifically something that we now know, since CARD's been operating for quite some time, is we actually have a database of all the producers, wherever they might be in the country, and they're free to register for this database and cheese and wine and all kinds of agricultural products. And so you can visit sole proprietors you can visit um, people directly and begin to build. These associations can be now be built because we now have a we now know where the village of farmers are and where they live and, and where their farms are and what they're doing. So there's more information now, and there's a, there are more ways of having a more positive influence. And so I think we can <coughs> just. If we choose to do so, we can do something with those that are, that are having a positive influence. And from my experience with both uh, CARD and the Prangian Regional <coughs> Development Center, when they get a dollar, they spend it and it gets in the village farmer's pocket. Um, they would like to do more, but they don't have more dollars. They are set up to do private investment, and I'll hold off to who they're doing with it till the end of the talk. But I think there are the conditions necessary for success in Armenia right now. That does not mean that everything will be successful, but there is the possibility of being successful. By the way, I hope you didn't take my, what I said. Well, I understand what you're saying. I mean, I'm not criticizing you or anything. Right? Yeah. What, I, what basically I'm saying is this, that this organization, sometimes, like a barbell, they one end, the other end, but in between they don't do too much. And therefore, the success of the two ends right. may be very, very different. Right. That's the point I was trying to And I, I agree that there are some organizations that are like that. And fortunately, within the past five years, there have been some organizations that take end-to-end -end responsibility and actually do things like go out to the villages, do site surveys, give training, do help them write a business plan, do all help the, the the business owners do what they need to do rather than just being okay, pick it up and take it to market, pick it up and take it to market. So there's been some growth and progress in that area. Any other questions? Well, if agriculture has got you upset, education will make you even more upset. Um, there are some good and bad things going on in Armenian education. And again, in the past five years, things have gotten better than they have been in the past. Um, one of the things that Armenia has done is in 2005 is it signed up to Bologna process, which basically means the Ministry of Education says that it will, um, to, it will um, 
develop standards and curricula and map 